us that this is being recorded for television to be shown. But North Street Association will be on the internet. It'll be on the internet. Yes, on the on YouTube for the North Street Association. On YouTube through the North Street Association. Watch it a few times if you want. Um, this is a time for public comment. If anybody would like to say anything, come up before us. No? Okay. Uh, the first order of business is the minutes of May 7th. Do I hear a motion to approve? We'll go for it. We hear a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Uh, first item on the agenda is an update from the mayor on the redevelopment of the Roundhouse parking lot property, including formation of an ad hoc Roundhouse develop Redevelopment Committee. David, take it away. Hi, good afternoon, um, councilors uh, and Mary. I just wanted to check back in with you about the um, Roundhouse redevelopment process. I think when I last spoke to you, I was coming before you seeking your endorsement of uh, my plan to utilize uh, services from mass development um, and then and also an endorsement of the um, priority development order uh, which both moved forward to this, or which moved forward to the city council and was adopted um, I think that when I spoke to you at the time I uh, we were discussing um, uh, maybe a bit more, uh, more aggressive schedule than I that I than was realistic at the time about you know, having them get started right away in June um, uh, given the fact that there's um, obviously the budget situation is happening right now and then we're about to go right into summer it didn't seem like an opportune time to start a public process uh, right as we go into summer um, but what I did want to do is revisit the, the, the idea that we talked about I think when I was here before which was um, trying to model this process after somewhat I think was a successful process with the Florence Community Center where we took the Finance Committee, which had jurisdiction over that property, and created kind of an ad, and created an ad hoc c committee by adding some citizen members to it to have kind of an expanded body that could then hear and, and be a, a be a vehicle for the discussion that went forward about the reuse of that property. Um, and so, what I would propose to you, uh, so essentially, Util the company that was brought in by Mass Development is continuing to do some of, is doing its research on get, getting up to speed on the property and on the history and, and uh, you know, we've, we've been, basically we've been just providing them with all the background information. Um, but I would like to work with this committee to get a, uh, to get this ad hoc committee in place so that when we got to um, the end of the summer, August, you know, it, moving into September, we could then sort of more formally begin the process. Um, so I wanted to just discuss with you briefly what your, A, whether you've supported that concept, um, and B, whether, um, whether and how you want to proceed with coming up with people who could serve on such a committee. Um, I know that I got suggestions, uh, people were suggesting things when this first came out or the idea first came out, um, but I wanted to just have a, get a sense from you what you thought about that. tried to find, because this was obviously a building that had a sensitivity to Florence, we tried to find a, a cross-section of people. We asked the Florence Civic and Business Association to recommend some people. Um, there was um, the Florence uh, Congregational Church, which was obviously had a big, you know, would, would be have an impact of whoever their new neighbor was. 
And so we had someone from their board who actually also lives in the same neighborhood. And then we had a neighbor, just a, a neighbor in the neighborhood as well. So it was about, I think it was four people uh, uh, complimenting the, the members of the, uh, of the finance committee. And then midway through the process, I left the finance committee after the November election, uh, but I continued to act as an ad hoc member of the committee. So it was sort of, um, so it was, yeah, five city officials and and four um, citizen members. So um, in so the same way, the finance committee would be a, a part of this committee. No, uh, I would just say that the EDLU would be would be the core of the committee, and that we would add additional members to it um, because you're, it's ultimately your responsibility. Uh, to be to advise me on this and to be consulted on this, and it just seemed at least our reasoning with the Florence Community Center one was it was it just seemed weird to have a separate committee and basically have to duplicate everything for two different committees. Why don't we put the two together and have them serve as sort of an ad hoc? And then there's more citizen input as well as the council that is involved all along the way. Um, and again, this is a slightly different process because. The end result of this is 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 to get to not not right up to the sale point. That's that's still to come, but it's more to get to an RF. What what's our RFP process? What are the things we think would be important in an RFP, et cetera? And then then the separate process will be going to you know working with this committee to then develop an issue and ultimately ho hopefully award an RFP to someone which I then came back to the Finance Committee on, just the Finance Committee on, because that was spelled out in the resolution, um, the, the surplus resolution for Florence Community Center, just like it's spelled out in the surplus resolution for the Roundhouse lot. Um, so, um, and, you know, and I have some, I mean, my own ideas about it would be to have, um, for example, um, someone who uh, is an architect, you know, has, is an architect or, or is knowledgeable about architecture and the downtown central business architecture, someone who could help us be sensitive to those issues. Um, obviously, having someone um, who understands sort of the arts and, and you know, business uh, sectors of downtown, um, those kinds of issues would be helpful. So, I mean, we could come up with, with different types of folks we want to see represented on there. Um, so that's, and, and I'm not sure how you want to do this, uh, how you want to proceed. Let me just see what other sure. Yeah. Other questions? Mm -hmm. I, my question immediately goes to how that affects you. Like, what's, your, what's our role in this? I don't know. Okay, so it's um, Any questions on the concept of it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I also, I share. Yeah, or I could I could bring it back to you and we could both co-sponsor it or something to the council and recommend that they appoint the committee for the How purposes. How soon did you want this committee? To I, I think I you know um, it's June, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can't keep track of it. I can't believe it's June already. I mean, again, we're talking about getting going in September, so I could uh, I could get you stuff. Well, I don't know what your meeting schedule is for next month, um, but I could. We, we have a meeting. Through the chair, I could send you some of the pe and there have been people who've who volunteered. I've had some counselors submit to me names of people who might be good for sort of such a thing. And this was in the context of back when we settled the lawsuit. I mentioned that we'd be looking to put together a committee. Just on the timing, just sticking with the timing for a second. Mm -hmm. We want to get this up and running by September. Yeah. The end of September, I don't think we have to do anything else. Schedule all the meetings. But if we're talking about early September. We might need to take a look at that. Yeah. We no, may I, need to have an extra meeting. We may need to move on this much faster mm -hmm. because it has to come to us if we're going to.
do this together. It may just be for, I, I would like to see it jointly proposed, but it may be that the timing of that okay. may not be able to work. So yeah. you have to go to the council at our second meeting in June. I guess we could get just voted on in council. I think so. I mean, if it were an administrative order, then we would, the council would just simply vote. Yeah, I mean, if it, were, if it were a council committee or something like that, yeah. then we could also just similarly, yeah. either, we, however you and it's just it. And it's just one vote. And it's not so, a standing co or permanent committee. Yeah, it's, I would it's think just it's to the, so okay. that would be my suggestion in terms of timing. Okay. We could certainly, if you want, we could, you could email I mean, we have us, three meetings. We have yeah. other suggestions from us. We could talk about having a another meeting just specifically on this. It's a little tough with all the other meetings, but if we needed to. So we could, we, we may be able to just do it. Maybe um, suggestions could come in from sure. members here. Yeah. Uh, who could like it. Okay. We could bring it forward to the conference. I mean, we do have three meetings in June, fortunately. Exactly. So yeah. um, there's three different opportunities. Obviously, we missed the first one, but there's still two more, two more. for the month of June. So I could pull something together. And then it could come to us at our meeting in July. Mm -hmm. Well, no. Meaning your Edlu meeting. Edlu yeah, meeting. we could we could try we could. Okay. Yeah. So I guess I'm wondering do we if considering we're so meeting full this June for the city council, um, why couldn't we bring this discussion to the city council? I mean, I, I'm, I'm just wondering why. It's a question to me of the t time necessary to con to think this through, as opposed to whether we have to schedule necessarily another meeting. I, mean, I don't think we have to. I'm not saying schedule. Well, I think if we get this through the city council, it comes to this committee. Oh, back. Back to this committee back. in our I'm July sorry. meeting. I'm sorry, I misunderstood. So that, and then we can talk about how to pull, put this committee with other suggestions on the committee. I don't think this, your proposal, are you accepted, will your proposal spell out the various memberships are you and things like names? that? I could. I could do oh, that based on my no, consultation. I would suggest just. Well, I would then actually I go with categories. I, I would. Oh, okay. Well, I just have think names to name. Then, yeah. Then I just think I that's. I just wonder if any if any member here of the committee believes that we need to see your written your written ad hoc committee proposal before it goes to the council. I think if everyone here is comfortable with it, you can take it straight to the council. Yeah, that's that's okay. Yes, that's we're all on the council. Yes. We can all say yes, we're very comfortable yeah, with this or right. not. You could also suspend that, rules to refer right. it to if you. That's right. Okay. So I, I don't okay. think we need okay. that. Um, okay. I, don't I think, think it's called you putting it on the agenda. Right. Right? I think it's called the mayor puts it on the agenda. So whatever yeah, city council meeting, whenever okay, you're so ready. That's, that sounds good to you. But yeah. Okay. But if you don't want to name names yet, that's fine. Well, well yeah. I think one of the things is that's helpful is if we could be part of Definitely. the process. Same thing with the ad hoc stormwater committee. I think it's helpful to not just put it all on the mayor. I agree. And I and, and, and with the Florence one. Before we appointed it, we we came back and discussed the names that were put forward, and the committee council, the committee was fine with that, and we proceeded. So okay, and we would it would definitely have um, my or somebody from the chamber, S probably someone who represents a downtown yeah. uh, business potentially. We'll see. It may not so, necessarily be the chamber. I don't know. We can. We how can does this that. sound in terms of the process? If you put this together. Maybe you could email us. We can give you any suggestions. We have. For we sure. can email you back. It can come to the council. Sure. That sounds okay. Yeah, just not at the not, not for discussion. Yeah, just not at information. Yes. Do yeah. it. Okay. We'll, we won't deliberate. Okay. 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 Um, sounds great. So that was uh, all I had uh, for now, and and uh, as I said, we're continuing to try to give them information. There's still some issues related to DEP that I need to also. We'll, update you on, but it's, we're still trying to get that clarified as well around, and that's for you and for uh, UTL, related to the status of the site and the, the cleanup status of the site, but that's still evolving, so um, so I'll, I'll try to keep you updated. So, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next agenda item is, I'm sure Economic and cultural vibrancy. So I'll turn to you to, to lead us off on this. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Uh, also, yeah. Uh, so I um, brought this for, 
I asked this to be put on the agenda because there would have been very little public discussion from the council uh, regarding the, uh, the state of affairs in our, in our downtown business district. Um, the, uh, I think the, the sort of the thing that started to boil in water was the, uh, the bench controversy. So, so I thought that this would be a good committee to discuss some of these, some of these issues in. And it, it may not be something we get any votes on today or, or anything, but it might just be a, something that we can you know, talk about every going forward. It doesn't, you know, today doesn't have to be anything special. Um, but I do notice that, the, uh, that our economic development uh, coordinator uh, is here and, and supposed to the mayor. So, Actually, what, where is, what are you with, are you, from the mayor's office? Yeah. I'll see Senior Virginia House. Um, so I, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to at least just open it up for discussion. You know, we, we have actually three counselors here who really have downtown as part of their ward. Um, Not me, but I well, you're, you're pretty, I mean, yeah, pretty, close. Well, it depends yeah. on where, where you start counting. Right. Uh, right. And, uh, Can I ask you to speak a little louder? Please? Sorry. Uh, so I just, I haven't said anything, so I don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I just, I, I wanted to um, let this be a public forum for, for, uh, for us and possibly for, for ideas to be, to be kicked around. So it's pretty open. And it may be that we could start by asking um, Terry or the mayor or Peg, if any of you, it's a pretty open-ended uh, agenda item, but it might lead us to, not necessarily today, but at future times, to say, okay, well, let's put that on the agenda for a future meeting, let's, if that's what I'm, I'm hearing. We just want to begin the conversation because we're the committee that's been charged with economic development in our downtown, that's one of the key areas. So if any of the three of you would like to, again, I know it's very open-ended and I, I can just start by saying that, um, and obviously uh, Terry and and um, and Peg have sort of different pieces, but actually there's a lot of uh, crossover in the work that they've been doing downtown. Obviously, Peg works with our social service uh, agencies, and particularly on housing issues. So she's been very involved in that part of it, and um, and Terry has been working obviously on outreach to the business community and and downtown related issues and. Um, since the beginning of my administration, we've been, uh, there's been a, a working group that's been convening um, uh, discussing various issues uh, related to downtown. It, it actually had been going on prior to that. Um, in some cases, issues specific. I know a great deal of time was spent working on, uh, there was a potential that the drop-in shelter um, was going to be needing to change locations. So the group had been working on those kinds of issues uh, downtown. It's been a, 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 again, it's been a place where um, social service agencies that are in and around downtown, uh, public safety, um, obviously representatives of the administration, and then downtown you know, residents and business owners, uh, property owners, can, can have, have, have checked in from time to time. Um, and so, uh, you know, that's been the context in which we've been talking about various issues. Uh, and in some cases, we've gone and asked, you know, gone and researched things like, you know, related to the Board of Public Works or things like that. Um, the issue of the, um, of the, uh, of the hot shelter sort of resolved itself because the lease ended up being, or the, the location ended up being re-extended. Um, and I know that, and Councillor Schwartz has participated in those wearing her other hat, um, and so uh, in that, in the context of that discussion. So, you know, I don't know if you want to hear from Peg, who has largely convened those meetings. Uh, Terry has also gotten involved more recently as well. Um, what, what but but things, we've been trying to, to work on those kinds of issues. Put this in context when this first appeared because it was in the, in the paper that somehow got into. Paper that I think this was the last meeting. 
first public discussion on benches in the city of Manila at one point they will be at this meeting hmm. tonight. Wow. And I think that was there because there was a lot of discussion a week or so ago on what was going to happen with the benches. Um, I have spoken to the council president. He said, what do you think about that being on the agenda? As things with the benches kind of got resolved, the, you know, we talked about, well, should we keep this on? Because the bench issue, at least for the removal of the bench, a lot of the rationale, I don't think anybody's rationale verbally, or stated to me at least, has ever been we don't want these people there. It's always been around economic issues. And we thought, I think that's when I'm correct, that this was that the benches are just one small piece of downtown economic development. And so that, I think, just to be honest here, and since it was on the front page, of, here's going to be the opportunity to talk about benches, no benches, more benches, cops downtown, whatever. And when that now seems to have been resolved, it still seemed a good time to, which is when you wrote me and said, can we keep this on the agenda? Say, let's talk about economic development. Let's talk about what makes a vibrant downtown. Let's have that discussion. And the benches are only one tiny little piece of that, but that was a piece that led to this particular agenda I don't think on. And then I also know you have a resolution pending on Thursday on this topic as well, so I assume there'll be dis sure discussion, discussion that, that as well. I, that resolution, I believe, is specifically around the issues of prevention. Sidewalks. No, sidewalks, which is also just a small part of that. So anyway, I just wanted to put it into, because okay. it was in the paper and I see people here. And obviously, I, I came. I, well, I came for this other item, but I'm here, right. and I to hear the discussion and take away from it what 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 you wanted yeah, me to. And if there's information we can provide, we can do that. Um, but I was here to observe the discussion primarily, since yeah. it's so your no, your committee. Was the end of the day about uh, the benches, um, and I, I read it quickly, and then I had to read it again, and it sounded completely different. <laughs> participated in those meetings and you know I, I would say that the um, what I want to offer here is that the general the tenor has been of, of those downtown resource group meetings has been how do we assist uh, how do we assist the people in need who are on our streets how do we do it um, in a way that is sensitive to the economic and tourist needs or, or residential needs of people walking downtown and using their stores and wanting to keep it a you know, safe and friendly place to be. And how do we raise consciousness really around the, the needs of those who are there and really address them as a community? As opposed to, you know, clearly no one's talking about panhandling statute. We've been there, done that, we're not going to do that. Clearly I think we're not going to remove the benches probably ever again for long time. I mean, I don't know, but I mean, I'm just saying that's, you know, in short, at least at this point, um, we know that, you know, the community responded. And the experiment occurred in short order, and um, we want our benches. So, so we are still left with a challenge, uh, I think. And that's, and I appreciate you putting on the agenda for that reason. And, um, and, and the question is, what, what, what's the, what degree are we, is this sort of the price one pays for living in an imperfect society in a vibrant area where there is some logic to people in need being there? Okay, so where's that? Where do we go? So it goes versus where do we go? Where's the intervention? And um, I know, and one of the things that might be helpful as a community education piece and that we had talked about in these meetings is having people understand the work that is going on with people who are on the streets. There's work going on that may refer to the social service agencies um, who have been sitting on that table, what the, their interventions have been and continue to be. And I think there is a learning curve that we as a community could do around what is happening. That's, that it's not about police intervention, because 99% of the time we're not talking about police-based problem. Um, we're talking about a social problem. 
and where and where it really intersects around the the network to end homelessness work that I do is is the issue of housing first. Is how do we um, even though I do know the problem of, of downtown is is more complex than homelessness. There's there's a lot of forces, but one of them is homelessness and um, and long time chronic homelessness. And how do we um, provide housing for those who are in fact hard to house? How do we make that a priority? You know, there's and that goes to this whole movement that we are very much a part of in our region that Northampton's been on front of on a, moving from shelter as a response to homelessness to housing, which is to say, you're not waiting for housing ready. You are lowering the barrier for what it takes to become housed. So you will house somebody with a substance abuse problem, and you will house somebody with mental health issues with the proper support services, but you get them housed. And how do we, as a community, come behind that effort, provide resources to that effort, because that part of the population on that sidewalk that is chronically homeless, and um, and need, it is it's got has got these long term problems are the how to hard to house population, and so we need to figure out how to push that, push that housing for that population in this community and in our region as a whole. So there are issues like that that we could afford to learn more about as a community as we walk down Main Street. You know, and we talked about the Happy Frog, and we talked about the you know how do we build awareness of the Happy Frog and have people. Donate money to these agencies instead of, you know, foster the commerce, as it were, of people who are on the sidewalk. You know, the, I think that's complicated too. I mean, there's a human being in front of us, and that, that human being is very different than a statue with a slightly with an opening for a coin. And so, I, I think that um, while we raise awareness about giving to the agencies that are helping these people, um, we need to just face our own challenge um, that what it is we're, we understand that we are living with as we move forward in really addressing the deeper issues. Permission, but I won't get permission. I'll take your question first, and then if anyone else would like to speak. Does that mean from here? One second, as soon as Owen's oh. going to speak. Uh, I, um, I, I don't not, I don't have the um, expertise to completely agree with Council Short, but if I did, I'm sure I would. <laughs> One, what I want to add, though, I mean, we're not social services and veterans affairs, so some of this does not fall under our purview, but some does. And I think um, talking about downtown as um, a place where people live, um, a place where people work, and a place where people uh, do business and shop is in this context, um, and um, and of course, land use is not just the, the stuff that has grass on it. It's it's, it's how people use public space and, and private space, and, and, and sidewalks and brickways and streets and things that. And, um, I would say that uh, I think that there's a lot of um, complexity regarding the, the actual populations that, um, that bother people. Um, and I think different, I also think different populations bother different people, but I, I really think, and, and you, you talk to 10 people who know about the issue and they all, and you get 12 different opinions as to what those demographics are, what the, the, who the people are that make up the, um, the loiterers downtown. I think getting our arms around that is, if you don't have your arms around that, you really can't make good policy decisions. Um, so I think that's really crucial, and I would, it, it would be very interesting to be, for this community to be a clearinghouse for some of that education that Council Schwartz is talking about. I think we would right, love data, some data. If, if we can, get, get, get a hold of some of it. Um, so that's number one. And then number two um, is that I think this should also be a, a good time for us to talk about how to use the downtown space more, or how to encourage it. I mean, we, all, we do know that um, a lot of the money we collect from downtown does not get filtered back into the infrastructure, its infrastructure. Uh, the, the parking uh, or the parking receipts and uh, a lot of the real estate and personal taxes get reallocated. They don't go back into making that portion of the street uh, beautiful or maintaining way or whatever it is. It, it's just the, the reality of our economics. Um, and, uh, you know, best
best practices when it comes to parking management is that you, um, you, you have people pay for parking to create availability, but you have a portion of that money going back directly into the downtown district, whether it be for plantings or, or you know, fixing the sidewalks or, 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 or for uh, events or you know, fun things that attract people. And I think um, that can be part of what we're talking about. I mean, I think expand, downtown is due to have the sidewalks expanded, to have them be wider in some areas or many areas. And um, I think it's due for more benches if we can scratch the money up for that. So I, I just want to put that out there. So there's two things we can kind of talk about going forward. Okay. Yeah. Hey, do you want to speak? Terry, I'll, I saw your hand. I didn't see your face. I'll call on you out. Well, um, Councillor Spector is right that um, there was something in the paper about this being the place to come to talk about benches. And as we all know, the benches are back. Um, So here I am, and um, I'm glad that this agenda item is here, and I want to thank you for that. Um, I'm, I'm speaking off the cuff, which is not the usual way I speak, so forgive me, I'll muddle my way through this. Um, I, I think that a lot of issues have come up during this experiment um, that have to do with the benches and um, who's here in town and, and who's made or not made comfortable to be here, um, the process of the decision making, uh, the role of the bid in this. And I, I wasn't aware that there was this committee um, of business people and, and others who have been meeting. And I think I w I'd like to know more about that. I don't know if that's the committee where it was first discussed and the decision about removing the benches was made. I mean, I simply don't know. One thing I have learned tonight is what the, what the EDLU committee is. I, I never connected that short name to anything, so I'm happy for that. Um, anyway, I, th I think this is a good place to talk about these issues, and of course they're very complex. Um, and while I want to see this discussion go forward, I really, I mean, there are a lot of people talking about this in the city, and it's a good conversation, and I think this would be a great place for, for people to be able to come and weigh in. I mean, even just to some of the things you said, um, you know, I have a lot of responses, but I don't want to make them now. I feel like this would be a great place for the community to know that they can come and talk about the things they're saying in the streets. And so maybe you can schedule, you know, advertise that and we just clarify one thing. Also, this is not a committee. There, there, for us, the discussion would be around the economic, kind of the discussion of the economics, whether it's around the benches or not, rather than some of the, uh, there'd be other committees, unless we form some forum to talk about that's this. But our I'm, committee, that's what I'm our committee is really specifically would be around the economic, what is economic development? I think it touches on a number of these issues. Some of the issues might, if we don't have a separate committee, would go to other committees to discuss social services. But certainly, just so you know, I, I don't feel comfortable yes. that this would be the open-ended discussion about all of that that people are talking about. But we could certainly be a forum where some of those issues get touched upon, which are related to the economic issues, because certainly that's one of the discussions that people are saying. It's like, uh -huh. you know, people are on the street and it kills business, or people are on the street and it creates vibrancy for downtown. And that is a place we could certainly Would it have be a appropriate for this committee to make a recommendation to the city council, to or to somebody, to hold a forum, to talk about, sure. yeah, you know, not just to talk about should we get more benches or not, but that and some of the certainly. issues you we raised. Could certainly, it would certainly be in our purview that we're going to have a bunch of three-minute forums on Thursday. Yeah, sure of that. No, I think I think that's. Yeah, we could certainly do that and. Uh, because I think if today is a recommendation as we move Because I think if you 
if you narrow it to the Social Services Committee, you're already defining the discussion. Yeah. And it's a much wider one. A lot of people are wondering about the bid and who has, you know, accountability for the bid and, and its role. So it's a, it's a big discussion. Right. And it may be, I think the counselor is pointing out, we may actually see some of that forum at this particular council meeting coming up. You will Thursday. be, I think. And, uh, but I think it's a, it's a good idea. We may want to wait and see what happens on Thursday. What that, but we could certainly move that forward tonight if the council wanted to say it's a good suggestion. And we will take the counselor first. Then I'll move to Terry's next. Uh -huh. so. I just want to say, I think that yeah, in some ways, to be true to the messaging uh, that's been, well, as this debate around the benches has seen its way through, it's been about this it being the launch of a community dialogue. I mean that, that we, we just you know there it was there was a there was a flashpoint, but now it's like there's a reason that experiment was undertaken, that whether or not it, you know yep. it, what occurred with it is its own story that we have a beginning and an end to. But there's a reason there's there is this complexity, there is this challenge, both economically and socially, and and we've been talking the talk has been to create room for the talk. I think we yep, should good. Great room for the talk. Okay. Before Terry, could I just uh, address one thing? Ask Terry if he'll give up his moment. <laughs> I think he'll yield, I think he'll yield to me. Fairly, yeah. fairly, yeah. fairly yeah. certain. Yeah. 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 I just wanted to address something Councilor Freeman Daniel said. First, to agree with him, because I understand the concept that you're talking about of reinvesting parking money. Uh, you know, Pasadena, and there's some other famous examples of that around the country where people put the money back into, you know, raised fees and put it right back in. I, but I did want to just be sure that people understood all the parking money now goes into, the, stays in the central business district. We don't, it's not being allocated to other parts of the city. We, we primarily what we're using it for is, well, obviously all the built-in, maintaining all the built infrastructure that's there. We're now paying off the bond, a portion of the bond on the new parking deck for the police station. We're using parking revenue to do that. Um, and also, obviously, all the staff. And we're also paying for a fair number of police um, officers who, who patrol in and around the downtown as well, as well as we're paying for some DPW-related work downtown. I agree with you, though. You could, you could, um, you could think about ways to, to redo that, but you'd have to figure out how to pay for those other things. And I also just didn't want the impression being that we're, all this parking money is flying out to all different parts of the city when the guiding principle has been it has to have some nexus to the downtown parking district where it's being collected. So that's all. Thank you. Yeah. I actually, um, it's an intricacy of a, of a budget that I, you know, I'd be, I would need an executive to follow. But um, yeah. I, I also think that the, I do believe we'll be having a conversation soon about uh, parking revenue. And uh, I do hope that part of the discussion about I agree and support with that discussion. So, um, thank you for the. Though I will remind you of the last time I suggested raising downtown I, parking was, rates. That no, you know, that was, that was <laughs> charge some of, some folks weren't all keen on that. So, good luck with that. One. And a lot of that came from the same merchants that wanted to venture. Uh, I don't, yeah, I, it's you know, it, it has its own dynamic downtown. Yeah, it does. Um, but I certainly know there's a lot of research that shows you can get more buy-in if people see that the money is being reinvested. And I get that part of it. Um, but um, so anyway, I just wanted before Terry talks, I just yeah. want to make sure yeah, I apologize. No problem. So, Terry, you yielded some of your time, but you have unlimited time, so <laughs> you still have unlimited. No, um, I thought it'd be a good idea just to throw a few thoughts out um, as part of the conversation, and um, nothing earth shattering to say, and a number of points, not necessarily in logical order, but will go there. Um, I think Councilman Schwartz's comments are extremely insightful and clearly identify the fact that this is a multifaceted issue and that being the quality of downtown and a downtown that we all feel is, is open and welcome to everybody and is, is a vibrant anchor of the entire city, one that fuels its quality of life and its tax base. 
and also sustains many jobs and many businesses that are in a position of being extremely sensitive to consumer confidence, consumer preferences, consumer inclinations. And many of those stakeholders' concerns are equally important in this conversation, but their ability to weigh in is somewhat limited by many different conditions. So we need to consider all the viewpoints, and I think you, uh, Council Inspector, sort of alluded to that. There are some perspectives of people who live out there every day and see improvements that could be made. It's not about saying others can't come in or others should go away. That's not the discussion. The discussion is how we can address it so that everybody feels that it's a place you want to go and enjoy and visit. Um, and as I mentioned the, the earlier point, <clears throat> downtown to me is the anchor, it's the center, it's the core. It feeds the tax base, it feeds jobs, it feeds small business development and a quality of life, a vibrant place. I'm concerned that we need to be a good steward of that and we need to find ways to measure that in an objective way. And I've slowly started to try to figure out ways to come up with indicators that can objectively measure whether downtown is on, on a plateau or whether it's on the incline or the decline in terms of all kinds of patterns, consumer patterns, tax base patterns, retail occupancy, re asking rents going up or going down, property sales going up or going down, is parking patronage, how many police calls to a downtown, putting all of those facts into sort of a common database so everybody can look at it and say, where are we going with downtown? Looking at our retail mix, do we have too many restaurants, too many entertainment, and not to suggest that you're going to control that, that aspect of it, but again, to start to look at where you stand in terms of your quality of, of your retail base, and the quality of, of the attractions you want downtown to have for, for the community. Um, as the mayor indicated, we've created a small working group of, of staff and stakeholders to meet on a maybe five or six week basis to look at downtown and identify micro issues that we can work on. Um, and to try to create a, 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 weak, you know, a, a punch list, if you will, of trying to tackle some problems. But clearly, there needs to be a macro conversation as well among the entire community to try to figure out what do you want downtown to be. Because I don't think at the end of the day, there's any disagreement on these issues. Nobody's here to take benches out. I mean, that just was not the way that that's being done. I think what we want to have is a downtown that's open to everybody and includes all the stakeholders that are involved in it. So to me, consensus is the outcome of a conversation of everybody. We want to try to come up with some consensus of what do we want downtown to be and how do we get there so people in my position then know what I've got to do because I'm not the policymaker. I'm in a position of trying to administer or deliver the results that everybody wants to see. And as I said before, I really don't think at the end of the day there's a big disagreement here about how we can make for having a very positive downtown. Um, and I will close by saying that my job hears all sides, as I've said in the beginning of my remarks. I hear it all. I hear some people who will speak publicly, and I hear people say, oh, I don't want to speak privately, but their concerns are just as important, too. And I think we've got to find a way to bring all of that. Um, and my desk in my window sits out on downtown. I see downtown all day long, too. I have perspectives and visions that I see, and I think that trying to bring everybody together, the chamber, the bid, city hall, stakeholders, residents, citizens, store owners, We've got to have a, find a way to have a common conversation so we can see where we want to go and make downtown, you know, what it, what it is and what it should be. So. Um, on the issue of the obviously feel like trying to get as much of it done, it's going to take a while. Um, but yeah, I, I'm trying to pull it together, but it's not going to be done overnight. That's for no, sure. of course not. I just was curious. No, that's I, a fair I question. Like that converse, that, honestly, that information should frame whatever conversation we have. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, it, it, it should, it's an it's a all-important frame, I think, around, around where are we now. And I also think, it's certainly back to the data, the question about you know, the, like you said, everyone walks around with their perception of who this population is that is more problematic, for lack of a better word, downtown. Or, and so, um, you know, and the, there's, there's the con artist thing, there's the homeless thing, there's the, you know, um, wayward teen thing, there's the, whatever, there's like a lot of labels, there's a lot of labels. And, and we, I, I would, I think it is very worthy for us to understand 
even though it's ever changing, there are obviously transients built in. At the same time, I suspect there's a way to devise some, some way to collect information, you know, over a period of time around the population. I don't know. I don't know whether there's a survey possibility. I mean, we do, you know, homeless point in time counts once a year. We walk up to people. So you talk, and if they talk, they talk. So I guess I, I, I feel like that would be, we need data to have a meaningful conversation. Mm -hmm. on, on what you talked about and on the population. There's currently a committee of the Chamber of Store Owners that's working on a um, survey um, to try to assess consumer perspectives and attitudes toward the downtown, and that's going to become a part of the broader database of, inc of indicators is to try to assess what, what, does the re what do the survey takers feel about downtown, what are their preferences, what are, their, what things, what are the things they think could improve, and I think that's going to be emerging in the next couple of weeks. The survey will be emerging? Yes, yes. I know the survey. New Haven, Connecticut, 20 years ago, did a survey in their downtown. I actually know some involved in that to try and find out, but it's exactly what you're talking about. Who, is, who are the folks who are on the street? Who are the folks needing money? Who are the folks who are sleeping on the street? And so I'm sure if you don't, you can find out about the cities and towns that have a methodology. There may be other questions for you, Terry. Don't go away. Yeah, that, yeah, I'm going to get that. At uh, Litany, uh, uh, it's been a big question. They worked for the Valley CDC for years, um, a dozen years. And through the Valley CDC, half her, the MHIC, the owners of the, the Cook Block. And then they got uh, elected and got into social services um, committee. You know, and it was pretty helpful because all of that stuff I'd already known. I'd known these people, these people, I've known the people that were hanging in the center of, of, of town, and I knew the, the services that they were getting, and it was it was tremendous. It was a lot of stuff. Um, these SROs, a lot of them were in SROs. They had rooms assigned to them, but they never went to them. They made sure that they were back for their, I call them well child checks. I'm trying to think of what they called them when they come to check on them every week. They made sure they were back in the room at that particular point. So they are, ex there are some that are extremely I not to label them. Uh, they're extremely difficult to house. There's a population that is very, very difficult, and some don't want to be housed. So there's there's professional there's professional panhandlers. There's this they call them this uh, snake oil salesman in front of AT and T who sells stuff for a church. There is uh, and I don't envy. I, I don't know how you're going to put all this this data together and figure out who is where and, and who's what. Well, I know well, there's a lot of services. There's a load of services out there that, that, that people are getting on the streets in our Hampton. And from Councilor Schwartz and her, and her other hat, um, Valley CDC, uh, ServiceNet, all of them. Well, the, the social indicators that you're talking about are critically important. I, I'm going to be speaking more to the economic development yeah. indicators. Yeah. yeah. So, so could, then to me, those are pretty clear cut indicators. Yeah. They're not yeah. going to Where social service help. indicators yeah. might be yeah. a yeah. lot just, more. Yeah, I think we'll get to that. Yeah. I just want to say um, I really appreciate um, hearing from you today, and uh, I think that we don't hear from you enough. Um, you know, part, part of the part of the problem with uh, with you know part-time counselors is that we have opinions that are very hard to dislodge unless unless we're confronted with facts. And uh, um, I think I'm not going to dislodge just over some facts. Well, yeah, that's that's right. don't confuse me with the truth, right? So, uh, but. The, um, the city, the city of Hampton, you know, wants to have a full-time economic development person, and, and that person is you now. So we do need some, um, and, and part of your job is to um, is to have is to bring your experience and knowledge into the policy round, not to make it, but to suggest it and, and, and guide. Um, quite frankly, guide or be a, be a partial guide in the conversation. When to good policy. I mean, this is this is what uh, the council relies on planning for, and uh, and um, you know, and, and the, the police and, and the superintendent the, the schools. I mean, we, we rely on uh, for better or for worse. We rely on the input from uh, from our executive branch to uh, to guide us in policy making. And, and um, I think we we can, we have our own thoughts and. Ideas and they might be good and they might not, and they'll be part of the conversation. But I do think that uh, we're going to need some 
some more from you. Um, it doesn't have to be soon. I know you're, you're new on the job, but we will need more, I think, to, to really to make some progress here. As you're talking today, we may have a, a Terry moment at this particular committee. Maybe it'll only be two or three minutes, but we only meet once a month. And it may be a time for you to come in and just speak to us about anything that's going on for a few minutes and uh, to just offer that opportunity. There, there have been people who have been wanting to speak. Uh, and Peg, I'll get you in a second. But, sorry, what is um, coming up? Yeah. And can, you, uh, can you state your name? Oh, Patricia Fournier. And um, I'm in Ward 3. So, um, I went to some of the um, downtown resource meetings. I'm a homeowner, and I used to be a teacher at Clark School for the Deaf and in East Hampton. <clears throat> and I just want to say that I think that Councillor Schwartz is totally correct, and I wonder why there was, there was no survey as to people that are on the street, you know, what is their education level? What was their last job? Where did they live? Um, you know, are they coming in from someplace else? Just everything you'd want to know. You know, is there some way we could help somebody or mentor them with, with someone? I mean, there's so many different kinds of, as you say, the kids, the scammers, the truly homeless or whatever. My take is that from research I've done online, trying to find out, and also speaking to people on the street to ask them things, um, there's a lot of drugs. And that's where I found that, um, I know our police do a great job, but from my friends and my friends that are business owners and just people going down the street, they've observed things that weren't quite right. And we do call the police, um, but it's scary. I have to say I've seen no panhandlers the last three days I've been here. <laughs> Nobody's been on a bench or anything. But there, there is a fear factor. And I think that the thing with the bench, there's been dialogue going on forever between people about this. And no one wants to speak up because of whatever that protest was six years ago. And you know, you have business owners that don't want to speak up because they don't want to be targeted. And um, that's very real. The conversations I hear about that are very real. So when this whole thing happened to the benches and everybody was upset at the businesses, I kept saying, well, what about the residents? And the people that come downtown to work, because I am like that person in today's paper that said they'd always give money to homeless people and then one day they didn't, and then they were you know, not assaulted, but really scared. And so now they go elsewhere, and I find myself going to other places to do certain errands or going around the corner to do things so they don't want to be hassled. And it's not just the hassle, and, and Owen's heard this, it's the cigarette smoke. <laughs> it's a lot of things that have come up in the last few years that weren't here before. So that's sort of my talk on that. The other thing I wanted to say is that if you are doing economic development, we all know that the arts are very important for the economic development of a town. And, you know, we're great about supporting it. We get great lip service, but I'm just scared that it's not where it could be. And so when you're talking about the vibrancy of downtown, a lot can be happening, whether it's transforming the downtown, I know there's no money, but doing something with, with the center or having events um, that can make this more of a destination, not just for panhandlers or to go out to eat, and, and that's a hard thing to do. I know that the stores are having a really hard time. And it's too expensive for a lot of the beginning stores to, you know, the young stores to be here. And I'm quite frankly really scared Ruth Hampton is going to turn into um, not a positive thing. And that's very much in my thinking. And we've had friends come up here that have thought about retiring, and we've been raving about Northampton, and they walk downtown, and they don't want to be here. So as much as I care about everybody that's on the street, it does have an economic effect. So, okay. yeah, I wanted to, do you want to ask a question? Yeah. The, the comments that I get uh, about all of this, let's go way back to the solicitation ordinance, I mean, 
people feel as though they're being preyed upon. Is that how you, is that how you feel? Yeah. You feel preyed upon and yes. it's nerve wracking. Well, what it is is, you know, there's some specific ones that target women. And, you know, you blow them off for a couple of years. <laughs> and then eventually it's like, you know, I don't want to deal with this going down the street. And, some, and they could be the scammers, and I know they've got that art down, and the policemen, they know exactly when to vamoose and everything. But just coming up right now, I was somebody sitting on a bench asking for money, and I said, no, thank you. And then I five feet down, and the guy yelled at me in this very loud voice, hey, you. I mean, seriously, I don't want to, you know, experience this. Yeah. So I think that, um, yeah. I mean, sometimes you see people hugging the walls along the stores. I mean, we all see it. We all know it. I just don't think people really want to talk about it. So a lot of the patrons at the Cup and Top in Florence mm -hmm. are there, and they come from Northampton. They go to the Cup and Top in Right. And, and, I, and I know that. They tell me that. But um, they don't want to go. And the, the one that they list was Starbucks and the Haymarket. They say they're not going there. So they end up in the center of Florence, which is fine for the center of Florence. For, uh, but, uh, well, I live, so here, I agree with you. I, I, I live I here because it's a walkable city, a bikeable city. But if I can't, then walk. <laughs> okay. I think okay. You Thank you. Thank you. Hey. I loved the Bruins last night, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel bad for Pittsburgh. Almost. Well, <laughs> Just to throw a few things out. Um, Context-wise, this downtown resource work group stemmed probably about two years ago, an effort through Mayor Higgins and Terry Anderson in direct response to concerns from the bid about safety in particular. So we pulled the venue together, um, Councilors Schwartz and Adams were included in that. It met during the day. So I think Jesse maybe had a little less flexibility than Pamela, so um, we didn't see him a whole heck of a lot. But I did take minutes, and they were circulated around, so there was some information flow. And evidently, it was the only um, spot where police department, bid folks, chamber folks, social service providers, and city officials, and um, interested residents were able to come together and just have this conversation about what, what was happening out, out there. So there was that that was going on for a while. We met up until like the fall of last year, decided to take a bit of a break, reconvene in the spring and just kind of take stock of everything. And then um, so we pulled a different group together, kind of some different merchants. Um, the social service providers are not present in this group, but it's still police and city officials and the bid and the chamber. So Terry's kind of spearheading that moving forward. So as he said, every five or six weeks that group will be coming together. So some of the uh, areas that we ended up with after the first effort, we talked about kind of changing this culture of giving, trying to let folks know there's alternatives. So that called into play the visibility of the happy frog. Um, so I've recently printed up a bunch of those cards that will be available to folks to just really heighten um, the interest in that location. And those dollars do go directly to the meals programs. The other thing with the resource cards, I don't know if you've seen them, the smaller ones that list the shelter locations, the drop-in, all any kind of other resource a street person may, may need. There's um, been a new batch printed of those, and those are highly um, used not only by the service providers to give to homeless folks, but also to be circulating downtown so um, people coming into the downtown do know that Northampton is a caring community and there are services available if people would like to avail themselves. So there's also um, a police grant that's just been received. It's not a whole lot of money, but the police department has heard loud and clear what people's concerns are. They're certainly concerned about the results of the override, but in the interim, they've applied for a grant that will increase their visibility downtown. It's um, an opportunity that will be made available to officers off time of their regular work hours. It's focused on crosswalk safety, but it will kind of monitor folks that may be in a less than healthy state that are kind of in and around the downtown. They um, 
also everyone's kind of been waiting for this ambassador program through the bid, which was really our kind of biggest hope for increased presence and visibility downtown to help tourists coming in kind of get their way around, know where they can park for durations, um, to maybe get directed to the Happy Frog, any kind of a just ambassador kind of function in downtown. Um, the bid, unfortunately, has not been able to allocate funding to that so far, but we're really hoping that that's part of the multi-pronged effort. Um, we're also hoping that the bid can use their communication mechanisms through their networking and their newsletter to let people know that all these discussions are taking place because it sounds like there's a lot of people that feel out of the loop and they are not aware that there's been discussion about this for you know two plus years. Um, the next one is Terry. I think it's going to be probably like maybe the third week of June. Yeah, I think that would be really helpful. So, um, the one, the ones that we had last when I was the staff person were, were open. Um, I think it's probably a matter of time availability, and if you guys are going to do your forum, that might be a separate thing. But, um, but as far as the data collection and the street outreach, uh, what we some of the agenda items through this last two-year effort, you know, we clearly brought the, the service providers in so we could let the business community know about the services that are available, just because we're trying to get everybody on the same page as far as an information base. And their um, Elliott Services, it's a, an organization out of Framingham that has a statewide DMH contract. We have Brendan Plant, who's the employee there. He's our street outreach clinician, so he's on the street all the time. So we, we know who everyone is, pretty much. There are some new folks that are coming into the summer and actually in the last shelter season that were, were new faces. But most of the folks on the street and the ones that are currently unsheltered, which could be anywhere from you know, 8 to 12 folks at any one time, they are known to people. Resources are made available. Resource linkages are made. Case management is offered. Apartments have been offered to most of the folks that you're seeing out there. So there is engagement, there is case management, there is data. Um, I'm happy to kind of pursue that with the providers. If, if you really want to know about kind of who's around, they could tell you in two seconds who lives in town, who does, doesn't, who's housed, who isn't. Um, so maybe we could put a little profile together. Um, the drop-in center functions all the time. It's an open door. Um, they're, they're trying to have appointments based so they can kind of really focus on people moving their lives forward and having really tangible tasks to accomplish, but the drop-in center will remain at 43 Center Street for um, in perpetuity as far as we can tell. Um, Claire Bateman has graciously given them another like two-year lease for five-year extensions, so we know that the drop-in center is going to be there. Service net case managers are there. They know who everyone is. The winter shelter is at the same location. There's an amazing relationship with the police department. Um, the other thing that we were working on was looking at the um, multitude of permits that the DPW issues around street activity, trying to get a handout to the businesses so the merchants can know exactly what is legal, what's not, what's enforceable, who's, what the protocol is for the different realms of enforcement, because the police are involved in some and not others. So um, the most prominent one was the musician's permit, which the was about a week after the first meeting they did alter that so musicians need to move locations after two hours and they can't go back to that original two hour location so there's um, multiple multiple approaches to this um. recommending just a forum, I think, would fall way short. I think you need something downtown. So we're really going to involve all the various groups, hear all the various offers. It really needs to be a well-thought-out process, like we did for the vision. So 
obviously you could go on and on and on. I think I have a lot of questions. And there's just so many sides to this. I think we really need a vision for now, what it means to be a vibrant downtown. There's so many voices on this. I'm afraid that just having an evening forum, oh, two great. forums, is just going to be, people are going to talk and that's going to be what comes about. Whereas from vision, from the vision piece, you really have a direction saying, we're going to come out of this with very specific recommendations. So I've been, for all the years I've been a counselor, and there have been a lot, I remember even 20 years ago, we were still talking about these same issues. Yeah, I, I agree, sort of. Um, I think that, I definitely don't want to have, I don't want to have a forum without a frame and without, um, without concrete information driving it. Um, so what I do believe is that it's not useful to have a forum until we have what Terry talked about and until we have what it, the, the profile that you're talking about. I mean, when you say they can do it in two seconds, you know, then that's that's great. I mean, it obviously changes over time to some degree, or maybe it doesn't, and we can learn that too. But I mean, I guess I would, I think it would be useful to have in document form, but it could be one page or two page, or it's not quantity, it is quality, about what it, what it is you're talking about. Because I know I've heard that in our meetings, you know, we know X, Y, Z, we know, and I'm, I'm realizing that as I, we sit here and as this conversation unfolds and as the controversy, you know, grows and dies, I feel like we need to have something that we are, we need to share the goods. I mean, we need to just, what you're walking around with, what Brendan's walking around with, we need to, we need to elevate that as part of our community conversation. So I believe that, I, I don't, I, I guess, I feel like there's a middle ground here. I guess I want to push for the data. And I, and I want to, and I, I do feel like I don't want to have a form of everyone's viewpoints without data driving it. Um, and, and, the, and so, but I also don't think we need to wait two years. Well, what I would like to see from the forum are two things. I totally agree. But I'd also like to see is what do we want out of this forum? And how are we going to judge that we achieve that? With Vision Northampton, it was very clear. There were certain things we're saying, what are we actually going to do? What are the goals? Otherwise, I'm afraid, having heard this conversation year in and year out, although it doesn't come in year in and year out, but it certainly comes every few years same conversation. I'd like to sit and see, well, what is it we want? What are the goals we're looking for? We came out of that, we had a citywide survey that was pretty clear about, and it really is affecting how we focus a lot of decision making in this city. It was pretty clear, for example, one of the pieces was that from the survey, forget the number, but something like 90% talked about urban core being the place that was developed as one example, and the outer rim as an area that we would try and create open space. That gave us a lot of guidance, and there were a number of very specific things. Maybe we can't do that here, but I'm just afraid a forum is just going to be, we're going to come back and have the same conversation. You know, since I addressed your question, I'm going to I think that, um, again, but, but it's a tricky thing. You, you're, you don't want a forum that's not going to, that's going to just have us spinning our wheels, but we could spin our wheels um, too long before we have it move the conversation in the name of getting ready to have the conversation. Well, so, I have a conversation. So they're splitting so. the difference. I, I think uh -huh. that there is, I think that, uh, honestly, we know uh, we know what we want. We know we want a healthy, vibrant, welcoming downtown. So, I, and that's our, but we don't know how we can maximally get there. And I say, and I say that as opposed to get there, because there's going to be imperfections in a healthy, vibrant, you know, um, great downtown. It's just, it's just we are complex human beings, so we're not going to get, you know, a perfectly sterile, no one's bothered ever downtown. That's not our goal. We're just looking to maximize the health and the vibrancy. We know that. So to me, before we can figure out more of what to do, how we want it, we need to start the conversation. I want to get, I want to, I want to say, well, where are we as a consumer, the consumer survey, and where are we on the retail openings, and where are we on, you know, the, the, um, the people on the, the, that are living on, or, or spending a lot of time on the street, where are we on the people who are walking up and down the street? Like, get let's get information that then can take us the next step about what what do we do with this information? Uh, <coughs> if, if there's any disagreement between you two after that, uh, that um, country voices has been what I, I side with her. I think we really do need to start. We need to start to frame it. Uh, I would just want to say, I would actually start the conversation even sooner. I think the conversation starts with how are we going to really have a value
valuable conversation. If you go back to vision, actually that's how it started. It, it, it was started by saying, let's all talk about what are the kinds of questions we need to have an answer in order for us to reach that goal that I think we all believe in. And then, so that was the start. Everybody was brought on board to say, well, let's do a survey. Let's gather data. So I wouldn't hold up the conversation. I think one key piece of that conversation is let's address what are all the issues we're looking at. And start it soon. I'm not saying don't get it started. And, and very early on, you need the data. So I don't think we're in that much of a disagreement. Sorry. I pulled up the, pulled up the sustainable working plan, the, the one you're referring to. Um, there's a lot here. There's a lot here already. I mean, I, I think if we in the state, state, if, if you want to consider these tracks to run on, they're wide and um, they don't look significant, like you said, these issues do come up. They're, they're maybe not perennially, but they are a, a recurring concern. And uh, I see many of the issues that we're talking about are here. I don't think we need to revision. I, I do think we need, I think, and I've said this before, I think defining the problems is very difficult. It is. Uh, and I think we want to do that, I think we want to start by doing it in a data-driven, or at least in a, in a um, more uh, more uh, controlled environment. I think a forum, I think a forum right after this issue with the benches is going to have, it's not sure. really it can get us very little, but I do think we need to have one. Yeah. I think, Good I point. think we should move, we move towards for data. I mean, I think, it's, I mean, we should, I agree. we should, Ask our I, I totally agree. our city staff to help us. Forward, yeah. I, I, there are a number of hands, and then you were you were first. And then second. One and then two. Um, if you could introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Mike Lowell. I'm uh, come from an architecture and urban uh, design background, um, and I, I just had a quick. Um, uh, I've been speaking to some people in the area, uh, architects and designers, who um, brought up the point that uh, the benches themselves, uh, and the, the benches themselves are maybe flawed um, in both their orientation and their uh, the fact that they have a back which people can sit on and become taller than most of the uh, pedestrians on the street and I think that functions to menace them uh, a bit but that's not what I'd uh, like to express um, I think there are some very shining examples of uh, cities of this size that have been overhauled uh, spatially um, to better facilitate um, sort of circulation of commerce and um, sort of uh, lingering transient population. You know, it's this, it's how do you design a multi-use urban environment. Um, and I uh, would just like to sort of throw out there in um, concert with the various data mining exercises that are going to occur, um, as you suggest, Councillor. Um, to maybe look at some examples of cities in uh, Latin America, uh, Scandinavia, you know, mid-sized towns that have um, dealt with problems similar to ours and more serious by, uh, you know, handling green space in different ways. And um, I think that that would be a, a good angle to come at this from as well. So um, I think, um, you know, P Pulaski Park has its flaws, and then the next sort of gathering spot is the Haymarket, and then there's that area out front of Urban Outfitters, which is uh, sort of a, a um, tectonic nightmare. Uh, but, it, you know, it, it's all really interesting. <laughs> Two. Um, so it, thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. oh cool shirt. Thank you. <laughs> uh, my name is Charles O'Neill. I'm a homeowner here in Northampton. Um, I was very upset with the, the discourse and dialogue 
that occurred with the same issue. <clears throat> I found it was very counterproductive and frankly intimidating to the merchants. I mean, it was to the point where people were, you know, encouraging people to boycott and even steal from the merchants. And uh, I, you know, this is, you know, if I were a merchant in Northampton's, you know, watch this happen, you know, I would think twice before I renew my lease. Uh, I mean, uh, clearly. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I think, unfortunately, the public here in Northampton sent a loud message to the merchants. And, you know, it, this, we all know this is not an issue of, of poverty or homelessness because we've heard about all the resources that are available to these people. And it's not as if the merchants are against these people. Or it, the, the merchants certainly are not against homeless people or against people who are impoverished. Uh, they're just having a hard time and they see this issue. So I think it's important that this committee and certainly the council should make some sort of a statement in support of the merchants, uh, you know, uh, you know, because I feel the merchants, I think the merchants feel kind of naked right now. And I, and I think that, uh, you know, without the merchants, you know, everyone loses, even the panhandlers. So, uh, and I think that, you know, without, obviously without a vibrant downtown, we all lose. And so, you know, the merchants, I think, are feeling very vulnerable now because of this really unattractive dialogue that occurred. And, and so I think that the council or someone should step forward and, you know, make a, some sort of a statement in support of the merchants and, 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 and so that everyone understands what their true position is. Thank you. If it's a new I'll make this very brief. Yes. Um, again, I want to say I hope that you do have a forum. And I caution you against two things. One is, uh, yes, plan the forum, but, if you, but you can't over plan it, you know, want, wanting to design the outcome. That's always the dilemma when you have a discussion. So don't be afraid to, to just begin it. And number two, I, I guess I just really have to say that um, data can be useful, but I also caution, I, I found some of the conversation here in the last few minutes very disturbing, and I, I caution you to be very careful about data, because you don't want to profile people. I mean, you're not going to ask shoppers all kinds of questions about their lives, and you have privacy issues, so be careful how you proceed on that, please. Yeah, I'm going to turn this now just to any more comments, because I'm going to turn it just the council. I'm just going to wrap it up again. Yes, two things. Um, yeah, I, I'm not... Uh, conversation here in the Committee for Economic Development and Housing and Use is a statement regarding the merchants in the bar city. Uh, and there's, the fact is the merchants, we need the merchants. Uh, everyone needs, everyone needs the merchants for a variety of different reasons. But the merchants also need us. Uh, the merchants are here because there's demand here, because there are people that want to come downtown and they want to buy They, they don't they don't set up shop in Belchertown because the people aren't willing to go there. Um, so it's a it's a mutual relationship, and the statement of our support for the merchants is a statement of our concern for the economic development and cultural vibrancy of our downtown. It, and it isn't it isn't it is wonderful shops that bring people and wonderful place to eat that bring people to Northampton. But it's also other people that bring them to Northampton. They people like to be around other. people see other people, people like to have a good time around other people who are having a good time. And so that's part of our statement. And the other thing I wanted to say to pay 
is that uh, <laughs> um, I, if any internal uh, information you have about the dizzying maze of permits and permissions that a regular person needs to get to do an art event or any kind of, or, or, a, or have food outside or sell something on a sidewalk, it, it is, it is um, the typical sort of small town um, uh, disaster where you need this person's permission and then this person has to sign off on it and then this has to happen just to have um, good things happen in our downtown it's 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 really bad uh, and I if we can clear some if this committee can do one thing which is make an easy approval process for what we already know are great things that happen downtown that would be a huge win. Yeah, yeah, what do you, you, you get in this small town that puts the next word from that was politics but you did you want to say uh, you go ahead and I'll be next one of the things, I think one of the things we, this is part of this whole conversation. There was a conversation many years ago about amplified music on the streets. And I, I, I remember at times, I don't know if any of you guys remember the magician who used to come in the boombox, that he would get a crowd of like 50, 60, 80 people. I remember going down with groups of friends and bringing people from other cities saying, come Friday night, because there's this magician. And what would we do? Well, we'd go buy ice cream, we'd take all the kids. And so there are disagreements about that, but out of that came this permit process. And I think that's part of a conversation about how open should the streets be? Because we have limited them much more. Remember there used to be the, can't remember their name, they used to play like once a week, they were from South America, the Peruvian Blues, very fine group, but there were like six of them. So they could only, their steel drum, we won't go there, but I like, you know, I think it should be more open, but we had that group coming and there would be a big crowd. And some people liked it, I loved it, I thought it attracted people, but some of the merchants, so that's part of this conversation. I think it's much bigger than just cleaning up the permit process, though I would agree. I think it's about how do these permits get put in place, are they the best thing for vibrancy downtown, and they're, the, they're tied into the same kind of issue. How open is downtown? How closed do we make it in one kind of way? So I just want to throw up there, and I want that magician back. So. It was, a, it was a young fellow that played uh, a couple of different size uh, joint compound buckets that was in part oh, of the yeah. park. He was fantastic. I mean, he had a hell of a crowd. He, had, he could draw a crowd in minutes. Man. And he had, a, had another panel out there that was short. It was full of money. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I'm not so convinced that just throwing out a foreigner might not be such a bad idea and get everybody to come and just vent for a minute, and then you get to hear just exactly what the hell they want to say. I'll drop it at that. You can leave. I just yeah. agree. <laughs> 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 we voted to say you could, you could be the leader. The question um, is, though, whether we do have any, I, I, whether we have a, a, I don't know whether it's a motion of a recommendation, of a request, of a, I don't, but I do think that we, we can uh, somehow capture our desire for the city to provide the council. I think that's the sense of just. So is that a motion? I leave it to the chair to schedule our, our next meeting or next or meeting after that to have this kind of kind I'm of not sure we should be. I mean, we could be that, but I don't think we're confining it to our Edwin meeting. What the is that you in place? Is that what you're saying? That it should be the Edwin meeting? That what? That, we'll, that we be the form. I don't think it's a bad place. I don't think it's a bad place. It may not be, but I think we need it more. I, and I actually don't think we need to solve that to make a statement on the record of request for our data. Okay, so we, you may words, be the place. Okay, so you're saying make it, let me just talk about Yours would be more open-ended to say, let's request to the council that there be a form. Correct? Oh, no, I'm not even talking about form right now. What are you talking about? I'm talking about request of the city to provide the council at their earliest convenience, information relevant to it to the gotcha. downtown okay. economic vibrancy and various challenges related thereof. But so I'm glad you didn't make the motion yet because it may have two parts. That's one part. I, I don't. I, What's the other part? I'm not the other part is about motion. whether I thought you started by saying. I thought you were going to say, do we want to move forward? Council, that the whole council say we should have a community discussion on this. 
I don't need to. No, that's not what I'm okay. saying yet. Fair enough. I mean, I'm not opposed necessarily. I'm just not. That's not my personal Fine. agenda. So, right would you like to make a motion? Yeah, go ahead. I'm not. I really want to support a motion. I, just, I think this is well within the power of the chair. Okay. The uh, power of the chair to ask for this information. Yeah. Okay. I guess that's fine. I guess I guess I want to go, and I I'm, I think there is some value, and we can do this, and you can do this as chair, at the uh, at the council meeting where we've got the resolution discussed. I think there is a value to reporting out. That's all I care about. The formality. I want it to go on the record. I want it to be in public, in a public that we are pursuing information that we think is in furtherance of this conversation. Okay. And so thanks to both of you. I will take what I would say is that the chair of this committee is going to ask for this data because I, it's under my purview to do that. Any and all data that's available. And it is the data. And that you, then we can bring that up when we're talking about the resolution. Say, here's something we have done. We've asked for this information. That's in, and that I think ultimately that we are seeing as, as being for helping to frame a forum that we will be scheduling when, at the, an appropriate time. And I think asking, Chair, if I may ask you, for you to ask for a timeline. I, you know, I do feel Fair like enough. there's a timeline. I do think. Terry, what you offered as that litany is, is promising and exciting, and I'm hungry for it. So I guess I want to go, you know, I totally respect whatever timeline you need to establish. I just want to hear it. I feel like that's that would be also good responsiveness to the community to give that timeline. And then that also will help frame our timeline for this forum. Um, so, so just to really say we are on a path, and we want to have as productive a community conversation as possible, and have everyone have at their disposal information that right now a few people and I totally respect your comments around the, being careful about the surveying aspect. It's just, I think it's much broader than that. That's one piece that should be done carefully that I just think we want to hear from the people who are on the street working with this population, just hear from them in a documented fashion. Great. Thank you. Appreciate that. <coughs> yes, sir. And we started out with Dean Allard. It was highly controversial. We started out with a forum. Everybody spilled their guts. We had it all written down, it was taped, and then we addressed every one of those points that came up before we had the next forum. And we also put it in with a bunch of data who was going to be there, who was going to be planting there, who was going to be harvesting, who was going to be who they were going to be selling to, uh, how much was the uh, was the recreation going to get. We had it all laid out. We had, but they were all things that were brought up at the initial forum where everybody came out and squawked about everything. But you, you, you were the chair of that, and it so you now have experience. Of <laughs> I know exactly how it went, but you know what, people, well, people when it first came out that it was coming up, people wanted to speak <laughs> their mind, and it took in two years. And look, look at the end result. Speaking of the mind, oh, yeah. Yeah. and look yeah. at the end result. The end result was it came out just right. I am conscious of our time. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I don't think we're against. I don't think anyone's here is against. I just, I, but I also believe that um, we we are going to. I, I believe that we should have. Um, we should do some education of ourselves, and also um, and also share in some of the information that, that does get collected by various private organizations and, and the municipal uh, resources that we have before we before we have a forum, um, so that. Forum, we, we're going to get. We will have one, and every, every, whatever everyone says will be written down. But we don't want to then make the mistake of running headlong towards things that that, we, that have either already been determined or we know are dead ends or, or what have you. So I, I agree that we do want to have one, um, and uh, I also think that people will, uh, people when we have one, almost no matter when it is, people will come and vent. Um, but I also think that uh, in this, in this, we can we can have a kind of a terrarium here, and uh, and that we should uh, at least try that over the summer. You got terrarium. <laughs> Spider in the box. Any other any other comments from the council? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.